Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Today I'm showcasing you the new cargo nets introduced in Slam Farm 4. Um, I've already added them about a week ago or so. If you had the chance to play on the server you could already try them out, but today I'm going to show you how to use them. They're pretty simple, but yet very advanced. You can do a lot of stuff with it. Um, yeah, that's basically <laughs> all there is to say about it. I will just start with a tutorial, I guess. So yeah, the first thing you're gonna need is a cargo manager. And you just place that down. And it will pop up a hologram saying transported zero items. Well, we don't have connected. We don't, we haven't connected anything yet, so it obviously doesn't transport any items. So yeah, to start off, um, you should know that these cargo managers have a range. So they will um, search for cargo nodes in a five block area in each direction. I'm going to visualize this with rule. So this cargo manager right here um, will search for machines five, for five blocks in each direction. And I'm going to visualize every part of this because you will see why when I uh, introduce cargo connector nodes. So yeah, these ca this cargo manager will search for nearby nodes in on these yellow blocks right here. Uh, also up and down, but I'm not going to visualize that. So yeah, um, there are three types of nodes. There's the connector node, the input node, and the output node. And the input and output nodes are the most essential stuff with connector nodes as well. But first off, I'm going to show you connector nodes. So connector nodes expand your network's range. So if I place a node here, the cargo manager is also going to search uh, for, uh, for nodes in these spots right here, five blocks from each connector node. So it will eventually branch up into uh, a lot of space. So if I added a connector node right here as well, um, it will get a little bit messy because it's going to search even further. Three, four. And yeah, all these yellow spots can be used for you to place you know, notes on. So, as you can see, we also made a has hashtag. And yeah, the input node is your node that pulls items from a chest. So, if I place a chest right here, and place a connector, uh, an input node on it, uh, it will pull the items from the chest into the network. And if you right click the input node, you can configure some stuff. Here you can put in a whitelist or blacklist. You can toggle whether it's a blacklist or, an uh, or a whitelist right here. You can also uh, toggle whether it should include the law. So, if you have an item, for example, jetpacks, which use the law to indicate how much any energy is left in the item, you can set that to ignore the law, and it will also accept items with where the law doesn't match, but the rest of the item. So anyway, then there's also a round robin mode, which is going to equally distribute um, all items. So. Let's say you have four input node, uh, four output nodes, and one input node. Normally, the input node is going to search for all output nodes, and if the output node can accept the item, it will go there. It just works like that. Best search, I guess. So yeah, um, with round robin mode, however, it will first go, uh, first try to go into the first in output node. On the second run, it will go to the second. On the third run, it will go to the third. So each output node has its chance to glance. So yeah, um, anyway, that's pretty much it. Oh, channels, right. Each input node and op output node operates on its own channel. And if I set it to the orange channel, the channel ID 2, it will only communicate with output nodes and other input nodes, which are on the same channel. So we can have... Uh, separate item flows on your network without interfering with them. So yeah, um, I want to transport items in this chest to a chest over here. So I place an output node there 
And all you have to configure on the output node is the channel. It was channel ID 2, if I could remember correctly. So yeah, um, currently it has a whitelist. So if I place awkward in here, it will not going, it will not pull these out. And if I place awkward in the whitelist here, the hologram, oh, there you saw it. It changed and it transported the awkward over here. So if I, on the other hand, blacklist Oakwood and pull out Oakwood in this chest. It will not transport the Oakwood, but if I place cobblestone in it, boom, it sucked the cobblestone and placed it into this chest. So yeah, if you specify an empty blacklist, it will obviously pull everything from the chest. And yeah, if you use an empty blacklist, you can also disable law because it's not going to check for any items, so yeah. You might as well disable that. So anyway, um, now we're going to use the white channel and I'm going to show you something that's pretty neat. So a few weeks or months ago, I added an API to SlimeFund's machines, which allowed SlimeFund to define which slots to interact with when uh, dealing with item transportation. So this never had a use until now. And if I, um, place an output, uh, input node here, empty blacklist, channel ID of 1, and place uh, an electric dust washer here. Oh, that's right. Um, you need to place the output on Slamfan machines first, because otherwise you will open up the menu. So place an output node on channel ID 1 as well on this electric dust washer. And crap, this needs energy. Um, whoops. Didn't think about that. Little cut right here. So yeah, I placed a coal generator and an energy man energy regulator. So this thing has now power. And yeah, we want to input dust sifted uh, sifted sifted ore. We want to input sifted ore into this dust washer so it can produce dust. And we just simply have to put dust uh, sifted ore into this chest, and boom, it went into this machine right here. Isn't that cool? You can automate your dust production entirely. And yeah, that's the API I, I told about. And all SlamFun machines, literally all SlamFun machines, have this functionality. So you can input in these. You can even input items into the coal generator. So um, if I placed a connector node here, so the range is expanded into this direction and also that direction and there but I'm not going to visualize that also up and down as I mentioned earlier and if I place uh, oh I need to destroy the cargo manager right now uh, the coal generator if I place an output node right here and set it on uh, set it onto the channel ID 2 and I'm going to set this on round robin mode so if I place a lot of wood into this chest or uh, it gets sucked up really quickly. Most of it, or half of it, will probably land in here, and some of it, oh, oh, <laughs> I'm an idiot. Should have placed the coal generator first. It obviously cannot insert wood into wood. Anyway, I set this to round robin mode. So if I place wood into this chest right here, Half of it is going to land in the chest and half of it is going to land in the coal generator. But the coal generator is full, so the rest of it will land here. So it will equally distribute on the channel. And yeah, now we auto automated uh, the, the thing. The fuel insertion, 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 injection uh, into the coal generator. And we also automated sifted ore product, uh, dust production via sifted ore. In but anyway, what's really cool is that it also works uh, with private storage chest. It doesn't work with a, a safes or community chest because those are private. But with public chests from private storage, it is going to work. So yeah, if you're using the upcoming add-on colored ender chest, it will also work with this and it would probably work with any uh, Slamfund add-on which adds new machines or inventories. And yeah, that's pretty much it. It's really basic, but yet very advanced. You can do some stuff with it. I could show you something, for example, which is really cool. Um, now this one, this one. 
and I'm going to get myself some wood right here. And if I place down an automated crafting chamber right there, oh, the energy is uh, suffering. I'm just going to destroy this. So if I place uh, an automated crafting table, but first let me place the output node. If I place an automated crafting table there, I could enter the recipe for Grandma's walking stick. And if I put wood into this chest right here, it will land in this. And it's intelligent about that. It will equally distribute on these slots, so it won't uh, put all items into the first slot and then move on to the next one. It will go into the first slot, for, uh, the next slot, the next slot, and so on. So it, get, it gets equally distributed. And if I now enable this block, it's going to craft Grandma's walking stick for me. And we could also, theoretically, output this using an input node and put it into a chest so it can automate a lot of stuff with it. Um, I have an idea. Let me go into my server and show you um, something that one of my moderators on the server has done. Oh, he's currently online. Um, not going to type now. And yeah, he has done some uh, crazy machinery right here. As you can see, it's absolutely mind-blowing. He automated literally everything you could imagine. And yeah, he automatically breaks cobblestone down. He then uh, produces gravel in this machine from the cobblestone. It then places the gravel into here where it gets sifted into sifted dust. Then it produces dust, uh, which currently stocks up. It gets sent in, into this buffer chest. Tin dust gets exported into this ingot factory right here, which produces tin ingots, which are, which go into this one where it crafts tin cans. And together with uh, organic stuff from the farm up there, it uh, produces organic food, which gets composted into organic fertilizer, which gets exported into this farm, which fuels itself. <laughs> It's crazy, and yeah, it grows faster and faster, and then he also uh, separates some of the sifted ore into this, where it gets uh, pulverized, crushed, etc., and eventually makes tiny piles of uranium, which uh, we should see a crafting process right here, yeah, which gets crafted into small chunks of uranium, which get crafted into uranium, which... <laughs> It's crazy, I know. Which uh, get fueled into the reactor access port, into the nuclear reactor, which I'm going to show you next week or so. And it also produces the coolant cells for the reactor automatically. See this? It's it's crazy. So the possibilities with this cargo system are endless. And I hope you've enjoyed it. See you next time. Bye.